What's up guys? Today I'm just gonna do a watch talk about my thoughts on the brand Invicta. Um, do I like it? Do I not? And bottom line up front, I do like the brand, but there are some things that I just wanted to discuss. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. So in front of you, um, I've got my current collection of Invicta watches. In the past, I've had many other Invictas, but they just didn't really fit my style, you know, after wearing it for a little bit. So I returned them or sold them. And these are the ones that have stayed in my collection. Starting off from the left, I've got the Akula 30197. Next to that, I've got another Akula 32360. In the middle, I've got the Grand Diver model number 3044. And then I've got another Grand Diver with the Open Heart 13706. Uh, Pro Diver 89270B. And then off the screen, because I couldn't get it to fit because it is so ridiculously massive, but the Invicta Sea Hunter. I'm pretty sure I've done a review on all of these, so if you want to hear more about an individual one, just go ahead and look through my videos. Um, and also, just because they're here, I also have a Scott Cassell Luminox, and then a Hamilton. This one is from the Interstellar movie. And I'm just showing you these watches because I wanted to I guess prove to you that I'm not an Invicta fanboy. I'm not loyal to any brand. I do have many other watches from many different brands. So hopefully that's kind of enough evidence that this will be a somewhat unbiased opinion. So I'm going to break this video into three separate parts, starting off with the cons, and then I'm going to go into what I consider the pros and then finish off with my overall thoughts. And the disclaimer is that, of course, the pros and cons are all going to be my opinion. But if you follow the channel, then I'm assuming that, you know, you give my opinion some kind of respect or something, you know, you value my opinion. So, you know, I'll, I'll give it to you. And of course, if you disagree, then, um, you know, feel free to comment in the comment section below and we can talk about it. So starting off with the cons, and remember, these are my personal opinion of what I think the cons are. But number one, unrealistic MSRPs. And obviously, nobody thinks that any of these watches are valued at the MSRP. For example, this Pro Diver was valued at, I want to say $1,000. When I ordered it, it had a price tag of $1,000. In reality, it costs about $80. And none of us are dumb. Obviously, we know that it's not worth $1,000, but I feel that the unrealistic MSRPs really invalidates any sense of legitimate value. Um, so, like I was saying before, for watch-savvy individuals, it's blatantly obvious that MSRP is overinflated. And so for people that enjoy Invicta, it makes it harder for them to justify Invicta as a serious watch brand. Moving on to con number two. The dimensions on many of their watches are too much. They're very cool to look at, not so cool to wear for, for prolonged periods of time. So, a perfect example of that is this Sea Hunter. So, you know, obviously the the looks and um, overall style, you know, if you like it or not, that's an, a subjective opinion. Um, but for me personally, I think this thing is badass. I really like the way that it looks. It's a, ho a solid hunk of steel and you know, just the bezel action and everything. I like the mother of pearl style dial um, but it's just way too big like this thing is physically uncomfortable to wear for longer than 30 minutes because you just feel that weight it's over a pound digging into the back of your wrist 
and then you know it doesn't help that you've got this ginormous crown guard also digging into the back of your hand and if they were able to make this in more realistic dimensions I think there'd be plenty of other non-Invicta people that would get into Invicta. I feel like many bold Invicta watch designs have not met their full potential simply because the size and weight is too much for a lot of people. Moving on to con number three, and this is the last one that I thought up of, is the community. And before you get all up in arms, I also think that the community is a pro, but I just wanted to cover the negative side. So when it comes to Invicta, you've got haters and you've got fanboys. And both sides of the spectrum, it's almost impossible for them to think critically about the brand. Um, and most of them just like to blindly love Invicta or hate Invicta. It seems impossible for haters to let the fanboys enjoy the watch and almost impossible for the fanboys to not retaliate and in my opinion negativity begets negativity and the Invicta brand is like the perfect example of that and also in my opinion I really don't care who cast the first stone so I don't care if it, an Invicta hater started the fight or if an Invicta fanboy started it but I feel like the only ones getting hurt in this war are the people just looking for a fun and affordable watch. Okay, so that concludes the cons, and now I'm gonna move on to the pros and the things that I really like about Invicta. So before in the cons, I was complaining about unrealistic MSRP, but in the pros, I think one thing that is fantastic is the actual retail price when you compare it to other similarly priced watches or similar watches in like the same category or caliber. Uh, it's hard to find comparable watches from other brands that can beat the out the door price of an Invicta. And for me, I never really felt like I had to sacrifice quality for the more affordable price tag, at least with the watches that I have in my collection. And this is really great for people wanting to get into watch collecting. Some people want quantity over heritage and masterful engineering. And I think in this case, Invicta is, is a really good place to start. I'm not saying that, you know, Invicta doesn't have some kind of heritage, but to be completely honest with you, you know, I don't think they focus on, on um, any kind of like ingenious design, ingenuity or, innovative stuff you know i think it's just cool designs and affordable prices um, at decent quality and so that's one thing that i think is just an amazing thing for invicta and like i was saying how i feel like you know it's really hard to beat their price with similar calibers um, case in point here in front of you i've got the seiko samurai and don't get me wrong i love seiko and i love the samurai but this, when I first bought it, cost me just over $300. And, you know, it's an awesome watch, but for a similar quality watch, like a Grand Diver or, you know, something like that, even the Akula, you know, I spent less than 200 in the mid hundreds. So, you know, just under three times less than a Seiko. And, you know, to me, like, you can't beat that out the door price. Moving on to pro number two is the bracelets. In my experience, Invicta bracelets have been nothing but solid, absolutely solid. Other brands treat their bracelets like an afterthought. Uh, sometimes the links just feel hollow and empty and not dense and they're very flimsy. But it almost seems like Invicta focuses more on the robust, dense bracelets than the actual internals of the watch. So that might be a negative, you know, if you look on the inside of some Invictas, you know, there's nothing crazy going on, especially the quartz watches. It's got like some cheap plastic movement holder and you know, it's just inexpensive materials. But then the bracelet is like this solid hunk of steel and, and that's where I really feel like I'm getting my money's worth. All right, moving on to the next pro 
Uh, I really like the vast catalog of unique and bold designs. Invicta doesn't care at all about what the watch snob thinks, and that is kind of very refreshing. Whether or not you hate it or love it, an outlandish Invicta design is going to get your attention. You're either going to compare an Invicta to a work of art or a car crash. Either way, you're gonna look. Considering that watches are how we express ourselves, that can be a very good thing. Not gonna lie, one aspect of watch wearing for me is to show off, and hands down, I get more attention from random passerby when I'm wearing my Invictas over any other watch. Now, do I care about that? Do I care if somebody notices my watch? Absolutely not, but it's just an observation and something that I find quite humorous that you know, my more affordable Invicta watches are getting more attention from random people on the streets that don't really know anything about watches. And moving on to pro number four, and this is the last one, and that is the community. So in the cons section, I talked about how, you know, there's negative aspects in the community, but on the pros, um, you will not find a more inviting group of people. Every new watch purchase that you share is celebrated like a party, and that's just a great thing. It's hard enough putting yourself out there in the open for the world to see, but in the Invicta community, you can rest assured that you will be showered with nothing but thumbs up and heart emojis. So when you are new to the watch community, it can be really overwhelming on what watch you should get, what watch you want to share. Um, you know, you always find that one random schmuck that just sort of shames you for the watch that you picked. Um, but if you go to any of the Invicta forums or Invicta Facebook groups and you share a watch, even if it's not Invicta, they're going to be like, hell yeah, good on you, man. Congratulations for getting into watches. And again, like I said, it's just a beautiful thing. So that concludes my overview of what I consider are the pros and cons of Invicta. Um, and I just want to go over my overall thoughts. So number one, whether you're new to watch collecting or you've been around the block for a while and bored of the popular watch styles, Invicta has some cool, outright crazy designs that are more than affordable and easy to get into. Some other watch brands takes a serious investment to become part of that community, but for Invicta, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not very consuming, at least financially. You can get in it and get out of it very easily, and I think that's a great thing. I mean, how many circular watches are you gonna buy until you feel like you're just buying the same thing over and over and over again. Every once in a while, it's cool to just look at the Invicta website and observe stuff that you've never thought would ever be on a watch design. And number two, I don't really consider Invicta's luxury watches, but I still think they're great quality. Some models may not be the greatest, but every brand has their own list of hits and misses. For me personally, I've had many beautiful memories in my life that were made just a little sweeter because of Invicta. Uh, one of these memories uh, was a Christmas, so I got a Grand Diver, the one you see right there, the open heart with the blue dial. I got that as a Christmas present from my wife, and that Christmas, not because of the Invicta, but it was just a fantastic Christmas. Um, all of our family was together. and. My wife knows that I'm obsessed with watches, but she doesn't make a lot of money. I mean, obviously we share everything, but when it comes to like Christmas presents, she has her own personal pride and she wants to use the money that she earned herself. And for somebody that doesn't make a lot of money, watches can be a very difficult thing to buy. But the beautiful thing was she was able to get me a watch that I think is beautiful, that I really like. Um, this is one of my favorite Invictas, let alone one of my favorite watches because it is so special to me because she bought it for me. And you know, so that beautiful Christmas was just a little bit sweeter because my wife was easily able to afford this fantastic Grand Diver. And then speaking about gifts, uh, when I when I was not making a lot of money and I wanted to impress my father-in-law for his birthday, um, you know, he doesn't know much about watches, so it's 
you know, pretty easy to impress him with something like that. Um, so I purchased him, or I bought for him a Pro Diver. Just a regular black dial with a stainless steel case and band. And you know, he was overjoyed with it and it didn't cost me much. It cost me all of like 80 bucks, but I was able to show him, you know, that I really cared about him and I, that I wanted to get him nice stuff and he really appreciated it. And to this day, he still wears that Pro Diver and Again, a beautiful memory made just a little bit sweeter because of Invicta. Uh, moving on to my next overall thought, I think it's important that we don't put Invicta on a pedestal, but really you shouldn't put any brand on a pedestal. Pick a watch because it calls to you, not because someone told you that it's the watch du jour. And conversely, don't avoid a watch simply because some watch snob told you that the watch is crap. I think Invicta is a great brand to get into, but no watch brand is perfect. Don't blindly listen to a hater or a fanboy. Do your research and find out for yourself if Invicta is right for you. Always look at the specs from multiple sources and pick a reputable retailer with a good return policy. That way if you love it, then congratulations, you found a great affordable watch. And if you hate it, then no harm, no foul. You can get your money back and continue your journey for the right watch, which that journey is actually probably the most enjoyable part of watch collecting. So anyways, that's all I got to say. Uh, I hope that I don't ruffle too many feathers. Uh, keep in mind, these are, again, just my opinion. And for someone out there, they, you know, hearing my opinion like this might really help them in their pursuit for the perfect watch or even just the perfect Invicta. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, thanks for watching and make sure to tune in to my next episode. All right, bye.